I know you're there first. It's always nice. Uh, hi, welcome to the Dr. Wendy Walsh live stream. It's, this is a place where I answer your relationship questions every Wednesday at six o'clock Pacific time. It's always a pleasure to see you. Many of you are my listeners from KFI AM 640 Los Angeles, or you listen to my podcast, Mating Matters, or you follow me on my TikTok channel, whatever, or you've read my books, but it's very nice to have you here on Wednesdays and I really enjoy answering your questions. So let us start out by saying hello and telling me where you're watching from. I'm clicking on the comments, but I'm seeing can't post comments from StreamYard. I wonder why. Huh. Uh, oh, well, very strange. Uh, hi, Instagram. I see you there. Hi from Phoenix. Nice change of scenery. Yeah, so I decided to sit on the floor of my living room. And I like the natural light from the windows there. So I figured, what the heck? Set up all those lights at my dining room table with my living room behind. This is just as easy. It's so hard for me to re read the comments on Instagram. Let me see if I can make an adjustment here. Slide it up. Uh, as you can tell, I do not have my 17 year old IT department here today. She is out thrifting somewhere. So anyway, now see, now I get my head cut off. I, it either works the shot on Instagram or everywhere else. I'll try to keep my cameras today. Anyway, hello from Maine. How are you? Thank you that you like the, uh, the lighting and the background. And let me get my comments going over here. It's always a few minutes of hi, Carol from Long Beach. Hi, Akshay. How are you? Uh, Adrian, you're amazed and fascinated with me. Fascinating. What part of you is fascinated with me and why? Um, I'm always curious. Um, I feel like in some ways I'm just a happy single mom from California, but then people say that I've done amazing things in my life and I'm always amazed when they say that. But, um, you know, I'm a little girl from Nova Scotia, Canada, who managed to make her way to California and get a midlife PhD and have a big career in the media, raise a couple kids and get really, really obsessed with the science of love. Hi from Oregon, how are you? Hi Vegas, how are you? Look where I see down here, where else are you guys watching from? I have to look over to see my Instagram. See, it's because I don't have my kid here helping me do this. So anyway, I wanna talk about a few things tonight. I have a couple, I'm prepared. I made some notes. If you listen to my KFI show on Sunday night, one of the topics that I talked about is, can we really change our partner? I mean, you often hear people say, oh, you know, a woman meets a man. She says she loves him. And as soon as he's committed to her, the first thing she does is try to change him. And you know what? I've also had men tell me that women bring out the best in them. The truth is every relationship we ever have enlivens a piece of us, right? That's why you'll often hear me say, well, it's not that you find your soulmate, it's that when you're with a certain person, you become the best you, right? And that's how you really tell if you're with the right person, if you become the best you. So, um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about if you really can change people. And the answer is, yeah, kind of, I mean, you can help your partner be the best person that they can be. I'll tell you some ways that it doesn't help. It doesn't help your partner be the best person if you're critical all the time or if you're focusing on what they're not doing or what the relationship is not doing for you. I often say, ask not what a relationship can do for you, but what you can do for your relationship. So first thing is to remind your partner of their value. You know, there's been tons of research to show that long-term committed people who report that have they have great feelings of happiness along the way, value their partner. And even though you or I might look from the outside and go, uh, their partner's not as perfect as they think they are, the truth is what really matters is the beautiful delusion. <laughs> we don't want to fix it. So in some ways, you have to be a little Pollyanna about your relationship. You have to imagine how great it might look to others or how great it feels to you. And you have to remind your partner on a regular basis of how valuable they are to you. Because, you know, you've heard me say this before, water what you want to grow. Don't water the weeds. So if you're constantly criticizing, if you're constantly saying, what have you done for me lately? Then you're going to have a problem, right? You're going to have, you're going to grow the weeds. They're going to constantly let you down because you're looking for the bad. Great example. When 
you decide you're going to buy a new car and you finally have figured out which make and model of car you're going to buy, you suddenly see that make and model in traffic everywhere you go while you're waiting to save up your down payment or do your lease or whatever you're going to do. So in the same way, if you're focusing on the negative aspects of your partner, then you will become more and more dissatisfied with your relationship because you're seeing it in traffic all the time, all those negativities in your partner. If instead you catch them being good every day and you tell them how much you appreciate them for being a great partner in some small way, you do two things. One, you enliven the best in them. You water what you want to grow. Secondly, you remind yourself why you're with that person and why you love them so much. And so it works both ways to create value in the relationship. So somebody's asking me, can you define change in a relationship? Uh, let's see. Uh, let me look at some of these. I should put on my glasses now. It's that time. So I can really read your comments. Uh, Oh, Akshay says that he's met a beautiful, kind-hearted girl online. He's never been happier. Okay, now contain yourself, Akshay, okay? Contain yourself. I know your style. Be cool, dude. Chill out a bit. Don't rush into any things. Um, Adrian, thank you for your kindness. Uh, I thought I saw a question about define change. Oh, hi, Jay from New Mexico. Far away. Um thought of something, but maybe it was up there on Instagram. Define change a partner. Change a partner might be something as small as getting a partner to change a bad habit that bothers you, an annoying habit, like however the toothpaste is squeezed or where they put their towel. And by the way, you don't change them by nagging them about it and reminding them they're negative. What you do is reward, you do behavioral shaping just like you would. If you were training a puppy to go to the bathroom outdoors Every time they peed closer to the door or any time they peed less in the house, you would reward them in some way as you shaped them toward the door, right? You would find ways to go, you're almost there, way to go, you know? And the same thing goes with your partners, partners of all genders, by the way, is let's say my favorite example is your partner throws their underwear on the floor of the bathroom when there's a laundry hamper four feet away. And all you want to do is just get it in there and you're doing it and you're nagging them and they don't ever do it. So then you start watching that underwear. And when they slowly, accidentally, one day, happen to kick it off a little bit closer, six inches closer, you go and reward them with a kiss. And then every time it gets closer, you give them a hug, a kiss, whatever their reward system is. And before you know it, they're doing it. Akshay says, what do I mean by contain yourself? Don't text her too much. Don't call her too much. Wait, chill. Give her a break. Um... Uh, hi, Alan from Illinois. What else we got up there? Don't doing a live feed during the playoffs. Is there a playoff? What are they playing off? What sport? Let me think about this. Let me see if I can figure it out. Don't tell me. This is May. A winter season is ending. We're going to spring. Is it hockey? Maybe basketball. Right? Doesn't basketball end at this time too? Those are the two sports. How'd I do? How'd I do? I guess. Tell me which one. Um, okay. Anybody have any questions before I talk about some other things? Let's see what we got for questions. Let me look. I got to go up here to look at Instagram. Hi, Asher from Oregon. How are you? Any questions? Any relationship questions? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, did you say good girl? Because I guessed hockey and basketball. It's only baseball and the weather, you guys. Um, oh, Lakers versus Warriors. Thank you. I know what the Lakers are. They're here in LA. Uh, okay. I met this girl while on a trip to Colorado. We exchanged number and she lives in California. I planned a trip to Cali just to tell her how I feel. Don't not just tell her how I feel. Plan a trip to Cali because she wants the trip. She wants to see you. And don't worry about telling her what you feel. Show her how you feel. Spoil her. Treat her well. Make her feel good in your company. Don't smother her, though. How do I instill the urgency to get things done? You mean you're a procrastinator in general? You need to reward yourself frequently for small wins. So make your to-do list every day and 
Every time you get two or three things done, give yourself some small reward. Even if it is to go gaming for five minutes online, or I like to go to a shopping website to reward myself. Um, if a partner says they have changed, should you believe them? Well, the only person who can judge whether you've changed is you watching the partner, right? It's about you and what you see from them. I mean, I could tell you I've changed, but if you don't see it, it doesn't exist. Uh, what else do we got? Hello, Brad from Naples. How are you? And Akshay, you're in Ottawa. How Akshay says, how can a man balance between too nice? Let's see. How can a man balance between too nice to a girl, but not being taken advantage? Okay, so Akshay, you're talking about being stuck in the friend zone, right? So here's the deal. You want to be kind and caring, but also have a backbone have your own sense of self-esteem. And if it feels like somebody is taking advantage of you, asking you to do too many favors, and you don't want to, like you want to stay home and watch the game, believe it or not, Akshay, saying no is your power for you. I mean, there are other people who say no because they're totally emotionally avoidant and they're always pushing away. But in your case, because I know because you're here every Wednesday, you need to practice saying no more often. And understanding that even though you have these anxious needs to be close, um, that she may not, and that she will come forward when you back off a little bit. Uh, I have a friend who, Instagram says, I have a friend who has started app dating and she's having a hard time letting go or understanding men being hot and cold all of a sudden when maybe days before they seem to be so into her. Okay, I want to tell everybody something. A dating app should not be called a dating app. It should be called a meeting app. It is no different than, you know, that five seconds in the bar. Remember back in the club? When you were before COVID, when people went to clubs and you walked through a crowd and somebody, a guy said hi, and you blinked and smiled and looked away. That's what a dating app is. Now, are you going to worry and stress because they didn't call you and that they're, they're suddenly hot and then they disappeared? No, it has to grow from there. And during the initial assessment stage, there might be a bunch of texts. There might be a phone call. You might get your hopes up but they have every right to ghost you because they haven't even had a date yet. That's why I was saying that you should try to get into the real world as soon as possible. A quick coffee date, uh, get on the phone, et cetera. Although I was reading this really interesting article today, I'm not quite finished it, on how the dating apps are trying to handle finally what's happening with sexual assault. So I'm gonna take a moment to remind women out there how to date safely off apps, first of all. A woman called into my show last week and said that she met a guy on a dating app. They've been dating for six months. She lost her virginity to him on their first date, already an issue. She's 26 years old. They've been having sex for six months, but there's one problem. He won't tell her his name. I know that's what I said. Uh, using the excuse, would it change anything if you knew? I assured her he was hiding a very big secret and she should run right away and that she had learned a very important lesson from this. So how should it really happen? It should really happen like this. Before you even get on the phone with somebody in the messages, get their social media. Look at them. Do they have friends and family? Are they doing things or in the world? Get their LinkedIn. Do they have a job? Get to know them online. That's not stalking. That's research. Okay. And then progress to a phone call. And in that phone call, you can tell so much about somebody because of their vocal tone and what they're saying. When it finally comes to have a date, don't have it be a date. Call it a meet in your head. And you say, hey, I have 20 minutes between appointments. Could we stop at the Starbucks, blah, blah, blah. Make sure you meet in a place that's public. Make sure you have your own money, your own transportation. Am I really telling girls this for the very first time? And make sure your friends know who you're with. If somebody doesn't have their social media and won't give it to you, move away. Guys, you have to know that your worst fear is that a woman will laugh at you. Do you know what a woman's worst fear of you, though, is that you will kill us, okay? So half the game of courting with men is teaching women that you are trustworthy, if, in fact, you are. Uh, this is a good question from Natasha. Uh, thank you for calling me beautiful, Dr. Wendy. I am happy being single, says Natasha, 
Am I a weirdo? I face negative judgment from society because I'm 47, no kids and never married. No, Natasha, I need to explain this to you. First of all, in the history and the evolution of the human species, 20% of women do not biologically reproduce. That's because they are very important to allo parents. I betcha in your life, there are all kinds of kids you're helping with. Either you do charity work with kids, either you've got your sister's kids, or you are employing parents who are feeding kids. You are part of the cooperative breeding system that humans evolved to have, okay? There's nothing weird about you. Some people desire more closeness than others. Some people feel uncomfortable with too much closeness. That's just your attachment style. Now, remember, relationships are part biological, they're part our psychological attachment style, and they're part social. So your question has to do with social acceptance of your attachment style. And my answer is, if you are happy, then you are not a weirdo. Uh, oh, Frank says I'm breaking up. Must be my Wi-Fi. Sorry, I kind of have lousy Wi-Fi and I didn't, usually I plug in, I have this big 25 foot cable and plug into real internet and I didn't do that. I'm so sorry. Okay, any more questions? Let me go to Instagram. My husband joined us up for an adult site without my permission. Say more. What do you mean by an adult site? A swinger site? A pornography viewing site? He joined you two up? I need way more information there. Does he expect to take this into the real world? Is it just visual entertainment? I should say that the... Uh, research on pornography is that pornography can be very helpful sometimes in monogamous relationships. Pornography is only dangerous if it becomes a supplement for a real relationship. And if you want a real relationship, we're also seeing in a lot of young men who have consumed pornography consistently since their teens, a kind of DE, delayed ejaculation, where they're unable to have an orgasm with a real human or with in a monogamous relationship because they're used to uh, they can't fantasize anymore. They're used to uh, fresh new images every time they have sex. Uh, so Instagram says that you hear and see me fine. So I guess it's just something going on with StreamYard and everything else. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, okay, so Akshay says on his first date, he bought her a package of balloons and flowers and donuts. She was so happy and she really likes me. It feels right for us to text all the time though. Well, if you want this to continue and not be just a huge splash at the beginning, Akshay, slow down. Just stretch out the time between the answering the text. If she texts you and you have this urge to text back right away, I'm gonna tell you wait an hour, okay? That's what I would say. Uh, you are welcome, Natasha. Thank you for saying thank you. Um, what else we got? Am I a weirdo for not liking a girl my age or a girl's weirdo for attraction? I know. Okay, so here's the thing about the age gap. The age gap does not matter unless somebody's in their reproductive years and wants to reproduce and the other one can't or won't, right? Because they have grown kids or what have you. So that's something you need to discuss from the beginning. And also, um, especially with these, we call them May, December relationships, you really wanna have the conversation about whether this is a short-term relationship or a long-term relationship because you know, sometimes to have a fling with an older person or a younger person is just a fun thing to do, but you may not want to settle down and buy real estate together. Uh, he says, then she will think I'm less interested if I'm back away. Trust me, Akshay, she will move forward towards you. I'm not saying back away. I'm saying take a little time before you text her right away. She won't think you've lost interest. She'll start chasing you. She sounds like she has an anxious attachment style too. You guys are perfect for each other. You're going to become fused. Uh, somebody said, am I reading your posts? I can't see them. I'm dating this special person I'm attracted to for five months without sex. How do I let her know I want to take it to the next level? Great question. You've literally been spending time socializing with somebody for five months and you haven't had sex. So have you held hands? Have you kissed? Have you been moving that direction? You don't tell her, you touch her hand. And you ask her, can I hold your hand? May I give you a kiss? You just do the steps because clearly somebody's afraid to move forward in that. Uh, more questions. Um, <laughs> Carrie says she likes you as a friend. Maybe you could be friend zone, dude, and you might not even know it. 
Uh, Gary, you're right. Uh, what's too much of an age gap? There's no such thing as too much of an age gap, except if people have different goals or somebody, you know, like I said, somebody wants to have kids and somebody doesn't. How do I help my 42 year old sister get back in the game after her last serious relationship that lasted two years, ended two years ago? She's financially well off, but only hangs out with our parents. Well, why do you want to help her? Like, is she lonely and saying she's upset and needs a relationship or is she happy with her money and her parents? I mean, our secure relationships and support system may take all kinds of different forms. It sounds like this is a need you have rather than her, but if she really wants to, then you help her build the dating app and you help her be careful and not get used because she has all that money, right? Uh, the, 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 something date frequently, but not exclusively. He treats me better than anyone ever has. I know he wants more. Oh, but he doesn't wow me physically. Okay, so here's the thing. Sex is part natural chemistry and it's part skill. So when you say he doesn't wow you physically, I say you need to talk about these things and you need to try some novel things. What if my husband wants a threesome and I don't? You say no. That's it. You say no. I will tell you, every man on the planet wants a threesome. Mm -hmm. Whether you're dating him, married to him, living with him. If you're a woman, back me up here. Every man at some time brings it up, sometimes as a joke. You just say no, if you're not into that. If you're into it, go for it, whatever, good luck. Um, my sister says, go for it, but I want the total package. Am I wrong? Jennifer, I didn't see what came before that, so I'm not sure what you're supposed to be going for, sorry. Uh, okay. How do I date when I'm waiting until marriage to have sex? When do I reveal this information to someone I'm dating? I'm a 30 year old woman, by the way. Okay, so I have a friend who actually went through this and asked me the same question. She had religious beliefs and she believed that she wanted to be married before she had sex for the first time. So she only dated within her religious community. That helps, narrows the pool. And secondly, she just told them right from the beginning. Yeah, because that way it's a screen. If it's the ones that are just there for sex, they move away pretty quick and you're not wasting their time or their money, right? You might as well just be up there. It's like when people, single parents are dating with kids, they go, when do I tell the person I have kids? From the beginning, in the first phone call. I mean, I have two daughters. I would say you're dating a three pack. You're not dating one person. Get it out there. Uh, uh, what else do we got? Wait, see if there's another question. What's your opinion about marriage before sex? Well, it's not my opinion. It's what you believe. It's what your religion teaches you. There's no one right way to be a human being. There are lots of wrong ways to be a human being, but there's no one right way. Um, the research shows actually that people who start having sex later, when I say later, we uh, so let me quote the study here. So early starters for the first time having sex would be age 13, 14. Mid starters would be 15, 16, 17. And late starters would be 18, 19 and above, right? And longitudinal studies show that late starters end up achieving more education, they make more money and they have fewer divorces because they're using, before their prefrontal cortex is fully developed when they're 25, they are using those years to get education and make money. Uh, yeah, Frank can't hear my audio. I don't know why, maybe it's on your end, Frank. You're watching on Facebook. Somebody on Facebook tell me because uh, the SoFly Diva could hear me fine on YouTube and Akshay's watching on YouTube and he's hearing me fine. So Frank on Facebook, anybody else on Facebook having problems with me and the sound? Uh, what else do I got? Any more questions? Is that it? Okay, I wanna say something really important and I want everybody to listen because this is super important. So, you know, my Sunday radio show on Sunday afternoons from four to six, we're gonna take it to TikTok for two weeks. On May 30th and June 6th, we're gonna do a TikTok live in a studio with three cameras and guests and listener questions. It's going to be so much fun and it's gonna be live, live, live. So if you, thanks Tommy, audio is good. Mike says he can hear me too. And Bridget too. 
must be your problem, Frank. Sorry. Um, so if you do not follow me on TikTok yet, my channel is the same name as everything else at Dr. Wendy Walsh. Um, I really want you guys to come on over. I started a TikTok channel just three months ago and I have almost 300,000 followers. Some of my videos are getting millions and millions of views. So I want to take like my top videos that have gotten three or four million views and I want to um, have guests on and debate my opinions, etc. cetera. So um, May 30th and June 6th at four o'clock Pacific time, we're going to do live, live, live on TikTok with guests, okay? Probably be more people there than even on local radio. You never know. We'll see. It'll be fun. Oh, you joined TikTok just for me? Thank you. I try to post a video every single day. Although, can you believe the racist things? Because I just post one with, because people asked me, you know, who's my family, kids, whatever, and I posted one with my kids. Please go on and say some nice things to uh, balance all the racist comments. I was shocked. I guess I was shocked because I live in California and I live in a pretty diverse neighborhood, but I was really shocked by some of the comments on that video. So please join TikTok, if only to go over and defend me and my poor children, uh, because that is heartbreaking. Uh, <laughs> Akshay's got another question. My girlfriend wants to be intimate, but I don't want to, don't want to give it up too quick. Is that bad? No, that's not bad. Akshay, you wait as long as you need and you can do other things. No kiss, hold hands, hug. Uh, are you open to people? I don't know what that means. Uh, okay. Any more questions or can I go start to make my dinner? I think we're near the end of the, uh, of the half hour here. Uh, so this Sunday I will be on KFI as usual. Uh, four to six KFI AM 640 Los Angeles. We're live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. But in May 30th and June 6th, I'm going to be TikTok live with guests in a studio. We're going to make a show and put it on TikTok. It's going to be so much fun. So tell your friends, tag them. Um, thank you, Mark, for the nice comment. I really appreciate that. So say goodbye and... Um, I'll see you guys next one. Next Wednesday, I think I'll be out of town. Oh, by the way, I was supposed to have a guest tonight. You saw me advertise it and he didn't show up. Uh, he's on book tour. So he's busy with his book. We'll have him in two weeks. So next Wednesday, I will not be here, but the following Wednesday, I will be. Uh, that's it. I love you all. I'll see you Sunday on the radio and in two weeks right here. Bye. <laughs>